G'day. Typically one would define what a category is before giving examples of one. I'm going to do things a little bit backwards in that I'm going to first describe three different categories that you should be familiar with if you're um, watching through these videos. Uh, and then after that I'm going to define what a category is and then show some other examples of categories. First, I want to talk about set. Set is the category of sets and its objects are sets. X such that X is a set. And the morphisms are functions of sets. Alright, now given two functions, um, well, first given a function, I would call this the domain of F, and I would call this the codomain of F. Now if we have two functions, say F and G, such that the codomain of F is the domain of G, then we can compose those functions. So we can take F from X to Y, and G from X to Z, and we can compose them. And we compose them by saying that, so say that the composed function um, is G circ F. Um, and in general, I'm going to leave out the composition symbol uh, later on in these videos, but for now we're going to keep using it. So, uh, how do we define this function? Well, hopefully you're already well aware that we have applied this function to an element x, little x in big X, and that's going to be g applied to f applied to x. Alright, so we have composition. Um, I want to note here that this composition is associative, which is to say that if I had, say, w, and this was h, uh, then if I take, if I compose um, h with g composed with f, that's the same thing as if I compose G with F composed with H. Uh, which is to say that the order of bracketing doesn't matter. Um, or parentheses. Um, so to see this, we note that um, G of F uh, composed with H. If we apply this to X, Ah, uh, sorry, let's say um, if we apply this to W, because we're using an element of W, of big W, um, we have G composed with F applied to H of W, but then this is G applied to F applied to H of W, and I have one too many parentheses there, and then this is, uh, what do I want, I want this, so this is G applied to F composed with H of W, uh, but that's G composed with F composed with H, all applied to W. Um, and as we know that if two functions uh, have the same output for a given input from the domain, then they're the same function. Okay, so we have that um, composition of functions is associative. Uh, and finally, Note that we can define a function 
which I will write ID of X, which is from X to, to itself, and it just sends any element of X back to that element of X. And this identity map acts as identity in that um, if I say uh, precompose f with this, so I have f composed with idx, um, that's the same thing as just doing f. And if I postcompose h with this, so if I idx composed with h, that's the same thing as h. Uh, all right, so that's the category of sets. The next category I want to talk about is the category of topological spaces, which we will write top underline for. So first, the objects in the category of topological spaces is topological spaces. So we have x tau, a topological space, and I'm going to say that x is a set and tau is a topology on x. And what does that mean? That means that tau is a collection of subsets of x such that um, the empty set and the whole set are elements of tau. Uh, tau is closed under arbitrary unions and it's also closed under finite intersections. Alright, so we know what the objects are, we need to say what the morphisms are. So the morphisms in our category are continuous functions. So f from x to y. And note that I haven't um, included this entire piece of notation here. In general, we suppress the topology from the notation and it should be understood from context what the topology of the spaces that you're looking at actually are. Okay, so what does this continuous mean here? Continuous. All right, continuous means that suppose, uh, continuous means that if, um, if you, is is open in y then the pre-image of u is open in x that is the pre-image of open sets is open are open all right, so we know what the objects and the morphisms are, and now we need to know what composition is in our category. Uh, and composition in the category of topological spaces is just composition of functions. But in particular, it's composition of continuous functions, and so we need to see that if you compose two continuous functions, the function that you end up with is also continuous. So let's suppose that we have some function uh, f from x to y, and some function g from y to z. And we want to see that the function uh, g composed with f is also continuous if these two are continuous. Okay, so we'll let u be an open subset of z. And 
we'll note that the pre-image of you on the G of F is okay. So we start with you here, and we want to know what things in X map to things in Z. And we see that. Well, to know which things in X map to, map to things in U, we need to see what things in Y map to things in U. So that's the, and then see what things in X map to those things in Y. So in fact, we have that the pre-image of F of the pre-image of G of U is the same thing as this. Okay, uh, and then G is continuous, so G inverse, or the pre-image of U under G is open. All right, and F is continuous. So the pre-image of this open set, the pre-image of U, is open. But I've just said that this is equal to the thing that we wanted to show was open, and hence this composition is continuous. Um, and finally, we want to see, we have, we have an identity um, function. It's the same as the identity function for sets. And we just want to know, is that continuous? Um, but it is continuous because, say, idx, the pre-image of idx of some open set in x is just x, is just u, which we've already said is open. All right. All right, the last category I want to get to before I actually define what a category is, is the category of groups, which I will write group. All right, the objects in the category of groups are groups. So that's set G so this is a set together with um, a multiplication so that's a binary operation taking in two elements of G and spitting out another element of G um, and an identity element So, um, recall that uh, for this to be a group, every, uh, so firstly the identity element is uh, an element such that multiplying by any element of the group returns that element, regardless of which side you do the multiplication on. Um, and the thing that makes it a group is that every element is invertible. That is, uh, for all G and G, there exists some inverse element of G such that multiplying by the inverse on either side returns the identity. All right, and we want to know what the morphisms are in this category. And the morphisms are group homomorphisms. Okay, what is that? That's a function between groups. Uh, and again, we're suppressing most of what I've written up here and just writing down the set with the multiplication to be understood, um, such that 
it preserves the multiplicative structure. So what do we want? We want f of g times h, so where these are both elements in g, to be the same thing as fg times fh. Note that the multiplication here takes place in g and the multiplication here takes place in f. All right. Um, we know that uh, we have composition of functions and we just need to check that. So composition in the category of groups is uh, composition of functions. We need to check that if we can pose two group, group homomorphisms, so we get back a group homomorphism. So we'll take uh, a map F from G to H and a map G from H to, no, that's, that's an unhelpful notational choice. Let's try this again. All right, we'll take a map G from G to H, which we'll call alpha, and a map from H to K, which we'll call beta. And I want to say that these are both group homomorphisms, and we want to see that if we compose them, so if we take B composed with A, is that also a group homomorphism? Um, so what do we need for that? We need for, okay, we want to say what B composed with al alpha, beta composed with alpha applied to say G times H is. Um, well, this is composition of functions, and these are both functions. So this is beta times alpha applied, uh, beta applied to alpha applied to G times H. Okay, well, alpha is a group homomorphism, so we know that that means that beta, this is beta times beta applied to alpha g, alpha h. But beta is also a group homomorphism, and so we have beta alpha g, beta alpha h. But this is um, beta composed with alpha applied to G, and this is beta composed with alpha applied to H. And so this is, in fact, a group homomorphism. So our composition makes sense, um, and I think it should be fairly clear that uh, our identity on a group which just sends an element of the group to itself is a group homomorphism and acts as an identity 